DaVinci Resolve 18 is out now and I gotta tell you some of these features are wild. Let me tell you about it. What's up and welcome back to the channel. Now this week we're gonna be taking a look at DaVinci Resolve 18 and some of the updates that they just released. Also, sorry if I sound a little funky, I've been sick. Bear with me, I'm hoping to be back to normal within the next couple of days, hopefully. All right, now just a disclaimer, this software is in beta right now, so some of these features are bound to change and become more robust as time goes on. But from the little bit of messing around that I've done with it already, I can tell you that some of these features are very solid already. All right, so obviously with that little warning out of the way, obviously since this is a beta, don't install this program on your main machine with all of your projects on it. Uh, stick with 17.4, which is a little bit more reliable right now since it's the final release version software, just in case with the updates, beta decides to be beta. So just disclaimer, I would take this and probably install it on a secondary computer or something else just to be able to test it out until the beta either becomes pre-release or very close. So I'll be going through and showing you some of the updates that they just announced and we'll be talking about these features. Right before we jump in though, if you haven't done so already, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. It helps me grow the channel and it helps get my content out to more people. Make sure you also hit the little bell notification as well so that you get notified when I upload new videos going forward. All right, so let's get into it. So right up front, a lot of new features if you go to the DaVinci Resolve page on Blackmagic website they have quite a few things listed out here as far as new features go let's go over these as always editing and color grading are the main areas of focus for me but I'll briefly touch on fusion and Fairlight stuff as well right up front I think one of the most significant things they've introduced is the cloud system this is a paid cloud functionality but essentially you'll be able to share your projects and files across the world and collaborate with anyone during the demo video they had they showed off new hardware as well to allow you to store your projects you'll also be able to connect those to your cloud and add users in to be able to work with you on projects. Really cool and really useful. Now you can have collaborators all across the world. As long as they can access the cloud, they'll be able to work simultaneously with you. Big game changer. So moving on, they also have this proxy generator app now, which installs with Resolve 18. This is what it looks like. When you open it up, it'll ask you to pick a watch folder and it'll automatically turn your files into proxies. This then automatically links in Resolve. There's actually a new option under the playback menu under proxy hand Handling, you can now tell Resolve to disable all proxies, to prefer them, or just prefer the camera originals. You'll get this little icon on your clip here to show you whether it's a proxy or not. That's pretty cool. Now you can just switch back and forth live with just a click. Resolve also has better media management now, so it locates media a lot easier. No need to link and relink all of your clips, which I know was an issue before. They've also introduced remote monitoring streaming, which is now available. So as long as you have an IP address, you can send your studio viewer to another monitor. That's really great for remote editing and grading as well. So color grading got some really cool updates. They've updated the magic mask to now identify all sorts of unique objects. You can now do object mask pretty easily, which magic mask was already incredible if you've used it. Depth map is just absolutely VIP. So resolve can now draw you a 3D depth map off of your footage. You can now add a node like this and drop depth map. And there you go. It'll show you what's in the foreground, what's in the background, and you can have options to invert it and then refine your mask, obviously. I'll definitely be playing around with this more and I'll have more videos about how to use this tool going forward. Track moving surfaces is also extremely useful. Let's say you have a logo on a shirt that you want and you want it gone or changed to something else. Then you can use this. It'll make a tracking mesh on your footage and you can replace from there. Editing gets some love too. There's better subtitle support now. That's always nice. A few more transitions and now you get an option to easily invert them as well, which you couldn't do before. Multicam sessions, you can now view up to 25 different angles, which is pretty crazy. So there's a five by five grid now where you can see all of the angles. When you export now, you can upload directly to YouTube and you get an option to create automatic chapters. So if you know on YouTube, you can mark your video at certain times, almost like chapter markers. Well, Resolve can now do that automatically automatically for you. Essentially, you just pick whichever color marker you want to indicate chapters. And when you export, it'll automatically include those on your video for YouTube. So Fusion's had some updates as well. They don't show all of them here, but for those using the paint function, that's getting better GPU acceleration. So it'll work a lot more seamless now. Text is also getting a big performance boost. I've messed around a little with some of the titles and text, and they now play back quite a bit smoother than before. Whereas, you know, before 
before you probably had to cache text and animation transitions and stuff like that just to get it to play back smoothly. So in Fairlight now too, there, it's not specifically listed on the website, but one of the coolest features that I found is that you have the option to move around your audio tracks and rearrange them, which I don't think you could do before straight from the Fairlight page. Now, one of the biggest advancements, I think, are the advancements in AI and the neural engine. We all know that's probably the future, and I think that can make our jobs a lot easier, coloring and editing. Obviously, they're integrating a lot better with M1 chips, so if you're using the new Apple Silicon, you'll you see a noticeable performance boost as well. AI is really starting to become more integrated and resolve, and I think as updates go on, we'll see the tools get better and better. This, for me, is really one of the top features because as AI becomes more integrated, I think it'll make it easier for us to do our jobs and eventually AI will get to the point where it can detect what you're trying to do and make your job easier. Resolve more so than any other program I've used is really starting to integrate AI a lot, even more so than Premiere, which really hasn't been doing that much with it. I mean, I know that things like the masks and object masking and stuff like that all use AI engines and different softwares, but I feel like Resolve is pushing it to the next level where AI is really starting to integrate with a lot of the tools. So effects like fast noise can now use AI capabilities. Uh, there's better edge detection tools now uh, to sharpen your footage more organically. Obviously the magic mask and depth mapping I went over earlier as well also use it. So all in all, I'm really excited to see what the future updates bring, but this is one of the most substantial resolve updates I think. And while it's not outwardly different, you won't see a ton of UI changes or new tools because of it. It is a significant step up under the hood if you will. All right, so that's where I'm gonna leave it for now this was really more of just a first look into DaVinci Resolve 18 and some of the features that they announced a lot of this stuff I need to jump into and experiment with more but a lot more content is going to be coming your way as soon as I have a chance to experiment with some of these features and really get to implement them in some of my own work if you like this video though and you want more content like this including filmmaking updates resolve content color grading so and so much more make sure you hit the subscribe button if you like this video and you learned something, make sure you hit the like button as well to get this video out, share it with your friends, share this channel with someone as well. And until next time, go out there and create something. A lot of it there.